刻むでハモンのビート The eighth part of JoJo has been running for nine years now, and I can say without a doubt that it is the most complex narrative that Araki has ever crafted. Many parts take a more linear approach, and the story is often black and white, but part eight has settled comfortably into a world of morally gray characters and shifting motives. Many people are put off by a number of things in part eight. Some people don't want to wait for a monthly release, and would rather wait until it's done. And some who do read it are confused by the more complicated ideas and either stop or complain. Many people have suggested that the early plot points in Part 8 were completely dropped in favor of new ones. In this video, I plan to look at one of the most common topics in that discussion the Walleyes. In the first section, I'll be analyzing the claim that the Walleyes were forgotten. After that, I'll be going over the known facts and present my own idea as to what the walleyes are. I've spent the past eight months doing my series on what people consider to be plot holes in JoJo, but I feel like Part 8 is nearly unrivaled when it comes to the amount of these that people claim. I find this strange, since Part 8 seems to be treated differently than any of the other parts. If we look at any of the other Araki Forgot claims that we covered, they can be split into a few different categories. First are the ones that are thoroughly debunked through basic knowledge of the plot. These ones are hardly even worth discussing. Second is basic continuity or art errors, which are smaller and quite separate from the basic plot. The third and most commonly talked about is the lack of certain elements returning. By far, the most common one of these involves certain characters' abilities, essentially asking, why didn't they do this instead? But even if we look at every apparent plot hole across seven different parts, not a single one is nearly as severe as what people claim is missing from Jojolian. At the beginning of the story, Josuke was crafted through a fusion in the Walleyes. In the following arcs, the properties of the Walleyes are discussed, however, its exact origin so far remains a mystery. Recently, I made a community post asking for what people think was forgotten in Part 8. By far, the most common one brought up was that the Walleyes have been forgotten, and that the plot will now focus on the fruit or the rock humans for its entirety. This is honestly one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard. I understand and could even accept that Araki could forget a detail or ability he had created previously, but at no point has he ever forgotten a major plot essential element like the Walleyes are. Even the most ardent Araki Forgot commenters have never said anything close to this about any other part. I find it insane that anyone would suggest. That the singular thing which the entire plot hinges on would just be completely dropped. Not only is there nothing to suggest it, but it's insulting to even consider as a possibility. I feel like the people who would say something like this just must not be used to reading an ongoing monthly manga. I keep seeing this consistently. Let's say a plot element is introduced in one chapter. And then the characters end up in a fight which may last for four or five chapters. During this, the story is focused on the fight, and not on solving some random mystery that was introduced a little while ago. However, for the reader, five months pass by, and in their head they think, hey, Araki hasn't talked about the walleyes in so long, he dropped the plot point. When in reality, the story is actually spacing out its mentions of the walleyes quite frequently. This applies to so many different Part 8 plot points that some people insist were dropped. Of course, the idea that the Walleyes would be outright forgotten has already been debunked by the most powerful method of debunking, which is the story itself mentioning them. So, for the purpose of this video, I have gone through the entire manga and found every appearance or mention of the Walleyes. By my count, That's 42 out of the current 97 chapters. Of course, some people will surely circle back around to saying it was forgotten again once it's been gone for a while. This kind of thing has happened with a load of plot elements in Part 8, all of which are far more integrated into the story than any random detail or ability Araki had supposedly forgotten in the past. 
I suggest that people try to re-examine why they think this way, and most of all, reread the story and try to come to their senses. Of course, all of these things will ultimately be resolved by the story itself once it reaches its conclusion, at which point we can look back and finally point out how ridiculous this whole idea is. Now I'd like to take the time to examine what we currently know about the Walleyes. While I am not in any position to speak definitively on the unreleased plot of Jojolian, I do feel like the conclusions I come to here are quite likely. The Walleyes were a phenomenon which appeared in Morio shortly after the 2011 earthquake. They jet out of the ground along the coastline, and run through the property of the Higashikatas. The Walleyes have the power to grant stands, which is seen with a few different characters. It seems that this power occurs through the bite marks, which appeared on Josuke, Yasuho, and Joshu after they came close to the Walleyes. Daya gained her stand after falling into one of the faults caused by the earthquake, and Ojiro was able to gain it from his childhood home. Interestingly, Ojiro's home was built on top of where the Walleyes would eventually appear, implying that even before they appeared, they were still able to grant stands while underground. This is likely to be the way the other humans in town gain their stands, through eventual contact with the Walleyes just from their day-to-day -day activities. The other power of the Walleyes is equivalent exchange. Anything buried near them will cause an exchange to happen. This is mainly known as the way Josuke was created, after Kira and Josefumi fell into the ground. However, just like the stand-granting power, the power of exchange has existed since long before the unearthing of the Walleyes. The Higashikata family has been using this power for generations to avert their family's curse. Traditionally, a parent will sacrifice themselves to save their firstborn son from the rock disease. However, later parents would try to find ways to circumvent this method. The Walleyes having access to these powers in particular should raise some eyebrows if you've read Part 7, since the power of the Saint's corpse has a quite similar effect. After the pieces of the corpse were scattered, Devil's Palms formed around them. Passing through a Devil's Palm would grant you a stand. The corpse itself also has the power of equivalent exchange. This was manipulated by Valentine to create Love Train, and it is later seen in Part 8 during the Johnny flashback. Johnny brought the corpse to Morio in order to save his wife from the rock disease. He temporarily hid the corpse under the Twin Pines of Morio, which would later be one of the significant locations of the Walleyes. The pines continue to be a recurring symbol in Part 8, even in the most recent chapters. Interestingly, a similar tree was seen in Part 7, during the Jesus flashback. Johnny used the corpse's exchanging power to save his wife and later his son, sacrificing himself and also creating the Autumn Leaves stand in the process. These things lead me to believe that the Walleyes are definitely linked to the power of the corpse. The equivalent exchange being involved in both can't possibly be a coincidence. This power of exchange is also present in the Lokakaka, so I would not be surprised if the origins of the fruit were also connected to the corpse. I think of the Walleyes as a type of Devil's Palm, since they function in a similar way. This may have happened due to a piece of the corpse or some form of its power being left behind in Morio, which went unnoticed by the US government. However, I think there may be another possibility. As was mentioned multiple times in Part 7, many different saints have existed, and their corpses are known to have supernatural power. It is possible that Johnny himself became a saint through his sacrifice, and that his body which was buried in Japan is causing the Walleyes to exist. The most significant location which is tied to equivalent exchange in Morio is the shrine underneath the Twin Pines. This shrine did not exist during Johnny's time, but the small cave in which it would eventually be located was the location where the corpse was hidden by Johnny. This location was used by the Higashikatas to transfer the disease. In the flashback from Chapter 64, Kato directly associates this shrine with Johnny's legend. So this shrine may actually be the location where he is buried, and also the origin of the power which would be emanating from his corpse. This location is brought up very frequently, including in recent chapters. 
As the harvest of the fruit draws closer, I expect that the walleyes will become one of the focuses again quite soon. The main appeal in Jojolian for me is its unpredictability. It seems like whenever I become certain that something will play out a certain way, an entirely new element or revelation will be introduced which turns everything on its head. I consider it an absolute feat in storytelling that I am floored by every new chapter that comes out. This is why I recommend that people be part of this monthly experience, rather than wait for the entire story to be done. However, I also recommend that people who have been reading it monthly go back and do a reread. By doing this, you can really see how early certain ideas in Jojolian formed, and seeing the story presented together can really help you reach a much greater understanding of it. If you want to be updated on new videos or ask questions, join the Hum and Beat Discord using the link in the description. You can also support me on Patreon to have access to Discord perks and some uncut videos. Thank you for watching. This is the part of the video where I thank my $5 and up patrons. Thank you to Norden Belich, Alex Ramirez, Raziana, Boat Girl, The Insane Penguin, Anasui Hat, Doorbell, David Barkmeyer, and Cloudy.